Я диспетчер. На мастер-классе прекрасного человека. Но прежде я хочу сказать, что мы начали новую программу Line Fars. И здесь присутствует половина отобранных стартапов, насколько я вижу. Ура! Очень организованы. А вторая как половина. Вы знаете, как, как активно программ Пипифак, мы всегда даем открытые мастер-классы менторов и экспертов, которые приезжают к нам. И сегодня впервые в Украине я хочу вам представить Ширида Расалура. направление, которое занимается э, специфическими гаджетами. Все вы слышали про то, что сейчас делаются часы от Хевлит Паккарда? Да. 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 Это вот он, это этот человек это сделал. Я передаю слово Я передаю слово Шидору, и он более детально расскажет о себе и о том, каким образом монетизировать свои продукты и какие тренды сегодня существуют в индустрии. I have no idea what she said, okay? But I will try to learn the language, at least a few words, the next time I'm here. Okay, great. And uh, with that said, I think there are a lot of people here. You know, I'm, I'm too old, so let me wear my glasses to see how many people are here. Wow. Um, I have to say this. If this had happened in San Francisco, there would not be so many people. I'll tell you why. They don't come unless you give them free pizza and beer. <laughs> so uh, I'm very happy that uh, you guys are here. I want to make sure that this is worth your time. You know, you walk away with something that is substantial. I want to talk to you about different kinds of business models that are driven by new technologies. We live in interesting times. And uh, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And so make sure that you learn to raise your hands and uh, answer some of these questions. You know, I get really bored listening to my own voice. Uh, so I would like to listen to yours too tonight, OK? With that said, let's start this off. I want to give you some background about myself. Doesn't work. Um, I went to an engineering school back in India, and uh, this was in electronics and computer science, electromagnetic waves. So uh, you know, I'm really good at fast Fourier transforms and DSPs. In the early days of my career, I worked with. How many of you here know about Alta Vista? You gotta learn to raise your hands this evening. Okay. Alta Vista. Go take a look at Alta Vista. So I was involved in the earlier days of some of the products there. And then I went to business school. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> I was I was actually a developer, right? I would write algorithms for big switches and routers. You know, even now if you go look at some my name, it's there in uh, some of the underlying voice over IP protocols, like session initiation protocol. And then I went to business school, and then went on to do ventures. In the first part, I started something called CloudPrint, which became ePrint for HP. Now it's there in like 60 million printers. Uh, also developed an application, you know, which has now been downloaded over 30 million times, around 26% monthly active users. And very recently, I launched a wearable. Everybody had launched a wearable, so I, I said, come on. Um, I launched a wearable, and uh, so far, the response has been good. So that's my background. Um, and feel free at the end to ask me any questions. I'm very responsive on Twitter, because it's only 140 characters. You, know? <laughs> you send me an email, it's going to sit for a long time. But if you tweet. Uh, I usually get back faster, okay? okay. With that said, let's start. Hopefully, it's going to work this time. Yes. Hey. How many of you here know the world's population? 
today. Not exact number, but approximately. Seven billion. Yeah, and it's growing. It's going to be eight plus billion in the next ten years. You know what happens when the world's population becomes so big? Nothing good. Hey, you're going to have kids and grandkids, man. <laughs> so, I'll tell you this. Today, there are 40% of the people who live in the cities. When the world's population becomes 8 billion, 60% of the people are going to move into cities. You know what else is going to happen? Trying to own something becomes really, really difficult. You will start to share. People who were born before <coughs> computers became prevalent are called digital immigrants. You know, I'm a digital immigrant. I was born in the 70s. <laughs> the hippie age, no hair though. <laughs> so, I was born in the 70s. People who are born now with computers, they are called digital immigrants. But when you move into an era when you have 8 billion people, you need to start sharing as much as possible. The sharing economy is going to take off. And that those individuals are called digital hippies. Right? So, remember, the business models are going to change when you have 8 billion people. You're going to move into an era of digital hippies where you share the sharing economy, Uber, Airbnb. Those things are going to change. So, every time I do something out there, I want each one of you to think of the potential business models that are going to change. Right? Around five years ago, when you went to a big company and asked them, are you going to put the data in the cloud? They would like throw up. You know, they would think it is blasphemy. But now, most of the government agencies are putting the data in the cloud. And that is a process of sharing, right? Anything that you put in the cloud, you're basically, it's a multi-tenant system. So, 8 billion people. Two hundred billion devices connected to the internet by 2020. Does anybody know how many billion devices are connected today? More than people living here. Nine billion today. Nine billion today connected to the internet. According to Cisco and McKinsey, it's going to be one trillion. You know, I, I can't count that much, but you know, it's, it's really large. Okay? In addition to that. Uh, I think I have to be on this side. Right? How many emails do you get? Approximately every day. I don't count. My inbox will never be zero. Right? <laughs> so it's over for me, man. It's a lot of emails. And just look at what's happening to our lives. There's a deluge of messages, you know. I it's it's coming at me really, really fast. So if you're doing a startup or if you're trying to do a better idea. What do you focus on? You know, this leads to a world of confusion. Let's look at this. Brain capacity remains constant, but the data that's coming towards us is like a tsunami of information that's being thrown at us. It's not going to be easy going further, right? So, what do you do? What happens to your time most of the time, right? So, if you actually look at an average human being. I think some of us here are abnormal, you know. Basically, you only have 41% of your time for work and play. You know, how many of you here actually spend, you know, 40% of your time sleeping? <laughs> Even if you do that, please don't sleep during my presentation. Okay? <laughs> Appreciate that. But, just remember two things. If you're going to create any technology for 8 billion people, when you have a deluge of information that's coming at you, focus on two kinds of technologies. Just two kinds of technologies. One that can enhance your ability to understand and digest the information. Two, anything that can automate things for you. Things that can be done for you and not done by you. And you will see, when I talk about technology, I'll talk about contextual computing. And you will see how 
using contextual computing, things are actually done for you. Robotics, things are done for you. And I'm going to talk to you about those technologies. And technologies that can amplify your abilities, you know, summarize information for you and present it in a way that's relevant to you. Okay? All right. What happened here? Oh, no. no butters. <laughs> I need some. Should I become your name for? Oh, no, the show's are Is it the HP? <laughs> <laughs> So, shall we go back to the world's population again? Just bear with me, it's getting too hot. So. I promise, I, I will only stop with my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. I know. So, this, this morning, I was listening to a gentleman who was standing here. You know, John, John. And he was talking about a person uh, who is data driven, based in the valley, and uh, I think she's one of the most awesomest individuals when it comes to analytics. Her name is Mary Meeker. If there's one person that you want to follow on Twitter, right, you want to try and follow Mary Meeker, right? And Mary Meeker put this slide up in 2012. Today I saw John presenting this morning about Mary Meeker and I thought, hey, you know what? This would be a good segue. What have I told you so far is the world's population is increasing and if you focus on technologies that amplify your ability to absorb information or technologies that can automate things for you, you know, you will really do well. And business models associated with the sharing economy, the digital hippies, you will actually do well. Those are very high level statements. But I'm going to break it down and take you down very, very quickly. Right? In the last hundred years, there have been only four technologies that have achieved 60% penetration in the Western economy. And those four technologies are, in the 1920s, it was the AM radio. In the 1950s, it was the rise of television. In the early 2000s, it was the internet. And after a family company in the US went down in 2008, uh, that was supposed to be a joke, the company is even brothers, but it's okay. Uh, and in 2008, mobility started taking off. But you know what's so funny about this? All this has happened in and around times of economic recession in the West, <laughs> economic depression and recession in the West. How many of you here are math students? Math? No one? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, the, in mathematics, there is something called correlation function. So, if you look at correlation function, if you look at recession and technology, you get a very interesting correlation as such. You know, and the beauty of this is each one of these technologies has been more revolutionary than the other. Let's just take mobile for example. We, I'll go back to the world's population. Right? The world's population is still 7 billion. I think a few more babies were born <laughs> since I said that. <laughs> and the number of people who, who have mobile phones, what is that number? Zero. No, 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 no. Mobile phones? Two, 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 two billion. It's there. I'm just checking if you guys are still awake. No. It's there, man. It's 5.4 billion. No, two billion. Right? Out 
of 7 billion world's population, 5.4 billion have mobile phones. The number of people who have smartphones is 1.6 billion and, it, and it's growing. Can someone tell me here how many people are on social networking? I'm sure all of you. But in the world, Two billion. It is actually 1.6 billion again. Last year and before last year, if you actually go back and look at the number of people on social networks and number of smartphone users, there has been a one-to-one -one correlation. Isn't that interesting? That the number of people on social media and the number of people who own smartphones, the numbers are the same. It may not be the same person, but the numbers are the same. I want you to remember that. So, since 2008, not only has mobile taken off, but people on social media and social networking has taken off. Right? So, remember the trends. And I'm going to go back to some business models and ask you some questions here. Right? And there is a person if there's a well-known theory about society called the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. How many of you know that? All right, thank you. <laughs> and it says, for a human being, you have dignity, water, food, shelter. And that's the hierarchy of needs for a human being. But if you look at the number of people who are below the poverty line, you know, people who make less than, you know, one dollar, uh, with the current exchange rate with the Ukrainian currency, it's around 12 something, right? Mm -hmm. Less than that a day, that is 2.6 billion people in this world. But there are 5.4 billion people having phones. So the hierarchy of needs now has changed from water, food, mobile, <laughs> and shelter. <laughs> that has really happened. Think about the fundamental change mobile has brought to a person. Even before you want shelter, you want a mobile device. And that is real. And that's why I said it is revolutionary. Right? And then, we are moving into a world of hyper wearables, which is wearables. There's also a pill that you can take called digestibles. And I'm not kidding. It's actually, if you have the pill in your body, you can then authenticate with the computer that you're working on. So, it's digestibles. And uh, so, I said we have mobile, it's revolutionary. Is that okay? You agree to that? Does everybody agree? Right. Social media is also revolutionary. The way we have done things, if mobile is rising, social media is rising at the same rate, come on, it's also revolutionary. Is that correct? All right. Cloud. I think cloud is awfully revolutionary because we are moving into the world of being a digital hippie. And we are moving into the world of a sharing economy. And multi-tenancy is the way to go. You know, almost any of the startups that I've seen at Happy Farm today, most of them, anything to do with mobile app, they have a cloud-based offering. It's not, nobody is running a dedicated server. You know, it would be absolutely stupid if you're running a dedicated server even for high security applications, you know, you can use a multi-tenant system, right? So the relevance of cloud has become prominent since 2008. So I think that's also revolutionary. And, wow, analytics. Let me stop here and ask you some questions. How many of you here have smartphones? Wow. You know, so the problem with that question is, I can't ask the question the other way. I can't say, how many of you carry dumb phones? You know, people get offended. Right? <laughs> dumb so, phone. You mean can, iPhones? <laughs> <laughs> so, can someone tell me the number of sensors? You know, I see a flashing, flashy iPhone 5S with that guy. Um, so, can you tell me how many sensors are there in your iPhone phone? iPhone 7 and Samsung yeah. about 5. Or so. yeah. Around seven sensors. seven sensors. iPhone 5 has seven sensors. Samsung, how many of you have a Samsung Galaxy? Uh, zoom. Yeah, zoom. <laughs> how many, you know how many sensors? The, the latest is five, right? Eleven. Oh, uh, ten sensors. What do you think those sensors are doing? Helping us. Huh? <laughs> Sensing, of course. <laughs> I don't know how many of 
you know this. Today, with the existing mobile operating systems and guaranteed with the existing apps that you have, if there is a change of state, for those of you who are computer geeks, change of state, at the minimum, your ambient light sensor and your microphone samples voice data and light data. So, if I walk into, a, let's say, a, a mall, how many of you know a mall? <laughs> you walk into a mall, let's say you go to a coffee shop, and next to a coffee shop is a place where you buy clothing, fashionable clothing. Your phone knows exactly you're in a coffee shop. You know how? Yes. Because there are thousands of people who have gone into the coffee shop with their phone in their pocket and they have stood there in the line, there is no motion, ambient light sensor, let's say you are holding the phone in your hand, it takes a sample, there is a noise sample, the phone knows the sound of an espresso machine. If you didn't know that, you know, that's the reason anytime you have a phone with you, a smartphone with you, the sensor is continuously collecting data for you. And where do you think that data is going? That's a whole lot of data, right? From 10 sensors, if all the data is going back to the cloud and being collected, what do you think is happening to the data? It's collected. It, it's being collected in a garbage called Hadoop. You know, how many of you know Hadoop, right? It's being collected there. And people are analyzing that data and delivering products and services that are relevant to you. It's so simple and that data is being collected. So, I will tell you one thing. The most important natural resource, you understand natural resource, right? The most important natural resource in this world is not diamond. But please don't tell that to your girlfriends, okay? <laughs> it is data. It is the most important and if you're doing any startup and you're not collecting data you're doing something wrong let me go back to the business model in any startup that you're doing collect data and at some point in time have a business model to monetize on that data you have to do that i've already spoken to you about two business models and i want you to keep a track at the end of the session these are all technology and trends given changes that are driving new behaviors. Any questions so far? Okay. Yes. Mike? Yeah. There's a company called ARO. And this company, for example, is uh, funded by Paul Allen. How many of you know Paul Allen? Alright, Bill Gates, Paul Allen, no, Seattle. No, okay, uh, Paul no, Allen, no, and there is an app called Saga Life Log. S A G A. It's a life logging app, and they'll track anything you want. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> Alright, so a trillion connected devices. Look at this. Lots and lots of devices. I'm just. It's a deluge. Everything is going to be connected to the internet. Your body, your car, your cat. Right? <laughs> Everything. We'll have a chip on our shoulder. But having said that, I want to tell you something here. And I want you to follow the business models associated with every aspect of this life. And after that, I promise, I'm going to go fast. Right? So that you, you guys can go have your dinners and... Uh, Okay, the year is 2008. I know it's 2010 there, but it's 2008. There were around 300 million devices connected to the internet. They were mostly PCs, desktops, laptops. There was no tablet, right? The tablet came in 2010, June 7th, right? So, From Microsoft? before that, you had like 300 you know, million devices, then you had all this loosely coupled way of connecting to the internet with protocols called WAP. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. They made the protocol and, and the phones came around five years later. You know, <laughs> the, the early acronym for WAP was 
Where are the phones? There was no phones for some time. Nonetheless, everybody made money around the device. Microsoft, they charged a lot of money for the operating system. Correct? Today, how many of you pay money for any operating system? If anybody does, I will laugh at that, right? Nobody pays money for an operating system. This was just recently, guys. Recently. That's why Microsoft is going through a major reorganization. <laughs> Another company that, that, that made money around the box, Intel, their chipsets are so profitable, right? But do you know how much money they make on a mobile chipset? Nothing. Absolutely, it's, it's very little. And all the companies who work around the box, you know, made a lot of money. And this dollar sign shows where you can make money. And then you had the cloud. The cloud was not connected to the operating system in any way. You had some media streaming, and you know, you had e-commerce. E-commerce has been there for quite some time. So the cloud was out there hanging, you know, just connected to the browser. And then you had money that's made around the box. Now, let's look at 2014. We are in this world, we are from 300 million, we are at 3 billion devices. Suddenly, there is no money to be made around the box. It's actually a big joke. If someone says, hey, I'm going to make a tablet and make a money, unless you're Apple, you know, <laughs> or maybe Samsung, but that's it. You only have two players. Everybody else are losing money, right? No one makes money around the box anymore. It's over, right? How do you make money? You make money above the box. And there is a very strong connection to the cloud. Every operating system is free. OS X, free. Android free, Chrome free. You know, slowly even Microsoft is moving towards free operating system. Right? Not fast enough, but slowly. <laughs> right? And with that said, 2016. I've kept the, the number three constant, you're increasing the number of connected devices. Now, where are you going to make money? Unless you're Apple and you can do below the stack kick-ass innovation, your money is going to be made in the cloud. And just see, I keep increasing the number of C's in every aspect of evolution. Every wave of evolution, there's another C. So, if you're a mobile app developer today, if you're not adding a community part into your app, you're doing something wrong. You just can't add you know, content and commerce in a platform. You need to add community in some shape, way or form. And if you want your app or a solution to survive, two years from now, if you're not adding context, trust me, you'll be doing something else. So, your business models and money to be made is up there in the cloud unless you have, you're sitting on some significant intellectual property to do below the stack innovation. So the summary is we are moving from a world of glass slabs. You understand what is a glass slab, right? We are moving from a world of glass slabs to the world of enchanted objects. I thought this was getting to be evening, so a little bit of romance, right? <laughs> Enchanted objects. So, remember, anything that you do, you're going to focus on contextual aspects, collect data, sharing economy. Now, those are the things that you should be having in your mind when you're building products and services and monetizing business models, okay? This is awfully interesting because we started with a recession in the Western economy. In 2008, everybody was panicking. Oh my God, jobs are going, you know, GDP going down, you know, economy shrinking. And I will show you a slide. If you had put your bets on mobile, social, cloud, and analytics in 28, if you had put, let's say, a thousand dollars, you know, you will see how much money you would have made so far during recession. And that is awfully important. And we are moving to the next era of enchanted objects away from the era of glass labs. And that's the era of Internet of Things. And it's like a perfect storm. If mobile, social, 
cloud and analytics did not come together, we would not catapult into the era of IoT. It's just because this has happened together, you know, we are in this situation. You know, and we all should be very happy because all this is happening in our lifetime. We have not seen technologies like this come together in such a significant way in one lifetime. You saw that right in the 1920s there was radio and then television after like 30 years. <laughs> now if you actually see you know, the rate of innovation is like absolutely positively fast. Okay, IoT characteristics. If you look at this, <coughs> the money to be made is not on the device. The money to be made is all in the blue area. It's all monetizing data. John came up to me earlier in the evening and we were talking about one of the startups that's in this group. Uh, and you know, he said, Shui, I think this company has to focus, you know, not just on subscription, but focus on making money out of the data. You know, I won't go into the details, but that's the right place to put your head around because you have to make money around the data in some shape, way, or form. At least collect it for now, right? That's awfully important. Um, won't go into any more details, but then the engine behind data is changing industries. It's changing health industry. It's changing travel, transportation, hospitality. In the next 10 years, guys, every industry is going, will go through a gut-wrenching transformation. Very painful transformation. And Mark Andreessen, you know, one of the VCs from uh, and Andreessen Horvitz says, Industries are going to go through, business models are going to go through a liquefaction, right? And I'm going to tell you what liquefaction of business models are, okay? Just bear with me as I tell you a story. And I use the word context, for that you need data. We'll talk about contextual computing, and I'll give you pragmatic examples. How many of you know about Elon Musk? Everybody knows about Elon Musk. <laughs> Next um, so, Elon Musk, this company, he has a car company, right? Yeah. Tesla. And Tesla's, one interesting part, last year, the New York Times, New York Times is considered very pure for journalistic integrity. It's, they always tell the truth. Um, you know, at least most of the times. <laughs> so, on the east part of the United States, the winters are slightly more harsher, northeast part of the United States. And he took a Tesla for a drive on the eastern corridor, the northeastern corridor of the United States, <clears throat> in the winter, and came back with a report and said, this car is not ready for winters. <laughs> Within 24 hours, Elon Musk, in his blog, said that, that the reporter had lied. Integrity for a journalist is everything, right? And the car reported back that this journalist had only charged the battery to 26%, whereas in his little book, he had a little red book and he was writing his log, he had said he's charged 100%. Okay, maybe my mistake, you know, we can forgive him. But, he also went around a long parking lot 46 times. And Elon Musk knew everything about it. Because the car was basically sending information back to the cloud. It's, it's, it's very easy. But I said something earlier, it is not about catching a journalist saying something wrong. It is about the significant impact of this to the car industry. I don't know much about Ukraine. But in the US, we have what is called car leasing. Do you lease cars in the trade? Sometimes. So you pay some money initially, and every month you pay a little bit more money, and after three years or two years, you give the car back to them. Right? It's called car leasing. So, you know what this does to the car leasing industry? If I were to lease, you know, let's say a BMW 
for $5,000 when I sign for the car, and I pay $500 a month. From next year onwards, it'll be the same rate, like $5,000, $500 the first month. From the second month onwards, depending on how badly I drive, <laughs> and the average distance I drive from the epicenter, say from my home to work, my lease rates will go up and down. That is a change in business model, isn't it? You know, hitherto unknown to the car leasing industry. I can take every industry. I can take hospitality, I can take healthcare. Every industry <laughs> is gonna go through a gut-wrenching transformation, right? So, you need to understand that. And the contextual aspects of it, it's an easy algorithm. All it does is it munches location information, your attitudinal information, your preferential information, puts it all together so that things are done for you, so that it's not done by you, right? And that can only happen with the world of contextual computing. Remember, I started with that tsunami of information coming at you on two kinds of technologies you know, that you can bet on. Right? And this is the engine behind those technologies. Right? All right, wow. Health insurance and the human body. You know how many different kinds of variables were there you know, around uh, two Wednesdays ago? I was just counting. Huh? If fitness tracking is one function, there are 146 different kinds of wearables that are around today. One to like, so that you don't slouch, you know, one for you to walk properly. Every aspect, you know, the wearables can connect. Connect. And you know the sad part? Every part of the human body is taken. Even that is taken. Okay? <laughs> so, it's over, guys. And that is changing the healthcare industry. In UK, there is a health insurance company, and I was there, it was called Bupa, right? And if you expose your number of steps that you take, you know, uh, to the healthcare industry, your premiums will go up and down. Suddenly that song from police, every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you. <laughs> 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 so it's getting romantic, but hey, hey. Uh, so, Home warranty, that industry has changed. Talk to any manufacturer of refrigerator. Connected home, you know how many players are there in connected home? Yeah, you don't want to know, I mean it's huge. Everybody has jumped into the world of connected home because they want to monitor you. Why do you think Google played three billion for a thermostat? So an example. And business models are also changing. You know, I wish I had more time. I would have explained to you, you know, how some of those business models have changed. Well, some examples. I am a runner. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, one of a kind who runs without being chased. Okay. So, and I also I have a busy schedule. I travel quite a bit, and you know, I, I'm competing in races. Uh, running is not in my DNA. I'm an Indian. I'm good for computers. Um, <laughs> And any time, you know, I have, and I have a calendar, a busy calendar, and let's say I'm with my wife at, at a mall, you know, depending on where I am, it, it, and if it's raining outside and if my calendar permits, you know, the wearable can now tell you that you can go run five laps, you have 45 minutes, just go do it, you know, and nudge you to do things, you know, and that's, that's possible. In connected home, you know, after I finish my run, let's say I come back home, when I'm very close to my door, automatically proximity sensors, today you have a gazillion devices that can do it today. Proximity sensors can open your door, it, you know, it can adjust your temperature, you know. And then, it can also recommend that I'm becoming fat. <laughs> now, chicken parmesan is very fatty. So, you know, it can put the right kind of food. Right? So. Things like that can basically happen. You know, magical things are already happening. It's not actually very well connected right now, but it's moving in that direction. Right? It's it's like Windows 98, Windows Vista, Windows days. Okay. Um, 
Anyway, but then I also told you, we're moving into a world where things are done for you and not done by you. We're moving into a world of robotics. You know, it, it started off with Roomba. Roomba. How many of you know about Roomba? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. How many of you have Roomba? No, <laughs> not, not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. So, early experimentation with Roomba. The guy who started Roomba now runs a hardware accelerator in Boston uh, called Dragon Innovation, right? You know, and these guys have a lot of um, experience in robotics. But things are done for you. Wouldn't you like it if someone cleaned your house every day? I would love it. Um, and then, think about automatic cars. This is happening, you like it or not. You know, even John mentioned this morning about you know, Google self-driving cars. In the, in, in the Silicon Valley, we see that all the time. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I would love it, especially if I'm sitting in a traffic. Sitting in traffic, I would rather that I'm at the back, you know, Wi-Fi or listening to music. <laughs> Play some you know, someone else driving for you is, is, is such a good feeling. Uh, but then, it's changing lives. You know how many people die in uh, vehicular homicides or car accidents every year? Can, can someone just take a number? 100,000. It's 1.5 million people. A lot of people die in car accidents. And everything is caused by human error. Right? Majority, at least 99 plus percent. And you know how many miles the self-driving cars have driven so far? Around 700,000 miles. You know how many accidents? Zero. Zero. One. One. Caused by human error. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like that one Google engineer touched the steering wheel. <laughs> I'm just, so one accident, 700,000 miles. You're going to save lives. That's about changing life. Gene sequencing, you know, trying to understand what you might be vulnerable for. That's about changing lives. I told you about how industries are changing. This is about changing lives, right? And see what's going to happen to different industries just with robotics. I thought I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you how robotics is going to change lives. Uh, the other day I saw a tweet about humans need not apply. You know, an advertisement, an employment advertisement, which says humans need not apply, and that's coming soon. There's actually an article. Just go search for humans need not apply. You'll, you'll see a series of articles on what's happening with robotics. This is going to replace cabs and truck drivers. It's going to happen, if you like it or not. Think about the jobs that are going to be lost and changed. Right? Car sharing. Car sharing. Ride sharing is a big thing. In you know, in, in some parts of the Western economy, and especially in Eastern economies like China and in India, you know, India has like I don't know, 1.3 billion people, right? And you, you have to share as much as possible. I hope this happens, right? And not you know, not many people will die. Um, that's that that's already being tested at this point in time. Drones. Yeah, Amazon with drone. Today, this morning, John was talking about how there is, in South Africa, there's a music festival that happened where there was an iPhone app uh, where you could order, it was an open air festival, of course, you could order beer, you know, with the app. It's not bad, right? How many of you have gone to music festivals here? And remember what happened the next day. <laughs> so, when, when, next you go to, when you go to a music festival, there are two things that all of us hate. Standing in line for beer and going to the bathroom. Right? And so, if in some shape, way or form, technology can make at least the first part less painful. You know, it'll be okay. Today, in some of the stadiums in the US, you can actually, you know, let's say, you are walking up from your seat to go to the bathroom, you can actually, you know, in an app, this is the New England Patriots, you know, it's, it's an American football <laughs> thingy. You know, you can actually, you know, click and say, you are you going to the bathroom, you'll get a code, and there will be a bathroom allocated for you based on, you know, how far you are. They're trying out some amazing new things today, right? 
that robots you know in space shopping companion it, it might start with need for disabled people and things like that and then you know it might become something that's normal so it's changing lives and most importantly these business models are challenging incumbents how many of you understand incumbents incumbents are people who are already in business a silicon valley company challenging the michigan auto industry never heard of <laughs> but that's happening and i will tell you this intermediation is going to happen and every incumbent in every industry is going to be challenged the way microsoft was challenged you know with free operating systems every industry is going to go through a massive massive gut wrenching transformation but it's going to change lives and that's the beauty of where we are going and i said what if you had invested in 2008 in companies that did mobile social and cloud and analytics can you see that mm -hmm. i'm kicking myself <laughs> <laughs> you must have figured out by now that i'm not that smart right um, so all i'm trying to say is where was the recession there is also one very important philosophical lesson that we need to take away any time you are down remember there is a freaking phenomenal opportunity in front of you and as budding entrepreneurs here you know in the happy farm ecosystem and the others you need to remember even in the darkest period you can get the best innovation and that's what you want to be looking for right with that said i want to summarize and i've taken way too much of your you know beer time right <laughs> mobile has been revolutionary but remember anything that you do with mobile has a social cloud and analytics component it's not just mobile it's a perfect storm of three things coming together and those business models have changed even though this topic is more skewed towards technology think about the business model implication in every aspect of it right and you're moving into a world where things are going to be done for you and not done by you focus on technologies that will amplify the ability for a human being to absorb technology as much as possible and remember technology of the future is going to change lives most of us will we will all live longer you know that you know that right our kids will live potentially up to 120 years it's going to change lives it's going to kill incumbents incumbents have to change otherwise they're going to die in the industries and every industry is going to go through a transformation and in addition to that all i have to say is there is going to be a trillion dollar plus impact a trillion dollar impact means if you're just <coughs> playing in that space you will make money a rising tide lifts all boats so just remember this the technologies of the future new business models incumbents have to struggle lives are going to be changed and every industry is going through liquefaction and most importantly you know we are in, moving into a new era where life is going to be far more different thank you very much for your time and i would love to stay on and take any questions from you and i hope this evening was worth it for you guys thank you